In this question, we're going to pick up from problem 2.5 and use the answers that we got from that question. We have some wave function that's a time-dependent wave function that's frozen at time 0. We have some constant A, and then all this is the same with the exception of a phase right here that's added to it. And in the problem, it says that the overall phase doesn't really matter, which is true, because if you just have uh, some wave function and the magnitude squared of it, which is the only real physically significant value. The wave function alone doesn't really have a big significant value because if you want to do anything, if you want to get any kind of observable, you want to use the probability density, which is the magnitude squared of it, and then integrate it over all space to find any actual physically meaning value. But whenever you have some sort of phase like this added to it, uh, it's just going to go away because you're going to do the complex conjugate of everything that's in the uh, um, absolute value sign, and then that phase is just going to end up going to, ends up canceling out uh, whenever you find, again, any physically significant value. But that's just the overall phase. When you have a single um, phase for one of the coefficients of one of the linear combination of wave functions, it does actually make a difference, and that's what we're going to show in this problem. First, we're going to find the wave function, and then we're going to do the wave uh, the magnitude squared of the wave function, and then finally the expectation value of x. So let's go ahead and jump into the wave function here. First of all, we can go ahead and uh, use our answer from 2.5, where we found this was actually equal to 1 over square root of 2. And that's because since it's a linear combination of two different wave functions, both of them sharing the same coefficient, aka the, sh the same um, square root of the probability, that probability is going to be 50% because it's two different wave functions. But anyways, it was end up, it ended up being 1 over the square root of 2 in general form, sine of n pi x over a, where n was 1, and then we added some time-dependent form for the first uh, energy level. And then this one was for the next energy level, 2 pi x over a. <clears throat> and so for this one, we can just add our phase right here. All right, and then within the problem, we actually had a couple of different things that we could use to simplify things. We had e sub n was equal to n squared omega h bar, where omega was hinted at the problem that we used to simplify a lot of different things, which was pi squared h bar over 2ma squared. And then also the general form of the wave function for an infinite square well, and just the spatial part is 2 over a, again, where, two, where a is the uh, width of the infinite square well, sine, running out of room, uh, and pi x over a. And that's uh, that's where we got all this. Actually, oops, sorry, this 2 is actually an a. And again, you can follow that in the video for problem 2.5. But anyways, so we used all of this stuff to simplify this even more, which I'll write out here. 1 over square root of a. And then sine, oh, actually, we took an exponential out in the front. So this stayed the same. And then this is the same as well. And then we can combine everything in here. And we made a substitution for the omega, so negative i, 3 omega t plus 5. And that is our answer for the wave function. And as you can see, uh, the biggest thing is that the, the phase just kind of gets tacked on to this um, exponential over here. So it's kind of a hint that it's going to be like a phase shift whenever we do the next portion, which is finding the magnitude squared of the wave function. Move it down a little bit. There we go. All right, so for this one, we, and again, using our answer from 2.5, oh, let's move this over. Things are going to get 
a little crowded. Um, okay, so basically you just, we had this and we squared it, we did some foiling, and then we ended up getting a one over A. So again, up until this point, this is all the same as our steps in 2.5 with the exception of that phase. So here we had a, um, this ended up being, whenever you square it for this portion right here, it ends up being uh, negative i, uh, everything in, in those parentheses, and then plus e to the positive i, everything in those parentheses. And we found that the, um, which used a very useful identity, where that is actually two cosine everything in there. So we'll just go ahead and put the two cosine. 3 omega t, and at this point, that, that's our answer from 2.5, but then you just add that phase shift here for our answer here, and that's it, really, since we did all the heavy lifting in the previous question. And then finally, you do the expectation value of x. So when you do the expectation of value x, we found it was to be we found it to be this, leaving it in terms of a over two, which was right in the middle of that infinite square well. And then we have our plus phi. Right? So that is our expectation value for x. Now, the problem also asks for us to um, make some physical interpretation using some different values for phi. So when phi is equal to pi over 2, and it's frozen at t equals 0, then um, actually we'll just do, sorry, just do that. And whenever we throw that in there, so this whole term goes to 0, this goes to pi over 2, right? So this whole cosine is cosine of pi over 2. And when that happens, this whole term here, the whole cosine for pi over 2 ends up going to 0, right? And then that makes the expectation value is equal to just a over 2. So whenever you do a pi over 2 phase shift for the wave function up here, it resets the entire expectation value to start at um, a over 2. So it starts right in the middle of the infinite square well, which is what I'm going to write over here. Let's do a small picture of an infinite square well. At 0 and a. And this is a over 2. So whenever you have this started from this phase right here, the uh, your snapshot of the expectation value will start here, and then it'll vary sinusoidally, assuming that you let the uh, t run out. And then for this one, whenever we have a phase that is equal to uh, pi, and then we have our also, we freeze it at the time equals t, so right at the beginning, that's going to cause this entire term here to go to negative 1, right, because it's the cosine. And then that means that our expectation value is end up going to be um, this glob of different things. So the important thing to note that it's actually a value that is different from uh, a over 2 slightly larger than a over 2, so it's going to be like somewhere within this range, and that's just, that's where it's going to start, and then it's going to oscillate from there. So the overall moral of the story is that adding a shift essentially shifts our starting position for our uh, expectation value and kind of also shifts our, or our time, so it's going to shift it left or right depending on the, the value for phi, so it kind of shifts where our starting point in time is going to be.